Hello everyone, this video is long awaited for both me and Rago and I'm sure for you guys as well. Rago, if you don't know, is a special needs leopard gecko that I got recently who has a really long story that I'm not going to detail here. If you're interested, I will include his story, which I have a video on in the links below and I'll also include it up in this corner up here. Oh, there's my finger. So yeah, up in that corner. Um, if you're interested, go and watch that first and then come back to this. But if you're one of the many people who has already seen that video, then you're ready to see his enclosure, which is what you're looking at right now. So this is in my special needs gecko bookshelves. I have a total of six gecko bookshelves in my pet room, and I try to keep all of my special needs geckos either on the bottom of the other bookshelves or in these two bookshelves in particular. The reason for that is that these gecko bookshelves are a little bit smaller and so it can help contain like um, easily stressed geckos so it doesn't give them as much space to flail about in. So my stunted growth geckos, and my visually impaired geckos, um, any enigmas uh, or any like severe cases of neurological disorders, those type of geckos will be in these bookshelves as well as in the bottom shelves of the other bookshelves because a lot of those geckos have to be tongue fed and having them on the bottom is easier. So Rago is actually not directly on the bottom but he is one shelf above from bottom and the reason I did that is because Rago is still getting used to handling and my arm and my hands reach out perfectly to his shelf when I'm sitting on the ground. So it'll be really easy for me to engage with him like without having to like lean down or without having to not allow him to see me coming. I'm really excited about having him in a front opening enclosure like all of my other geckos because I really think that'll help us, you know, get more acclimated with one another. He's let me hold him a couple times but he is definitely not fond of it. So let's go ahead and get started with the tour. So basically we have a humid hide over here. He actually just graduated from a little humid hide to this one and he used it yesterday and it was so precious because he actually didn't even start using his humid hide up until about like two weeks ago. So then he also has a plant up here and a plant over here. Then he also has a hammock because he is a good climber and I want to encourage that behavior. As long as he gets used to his surroundings, then I'm obviously not going to move the hammock from the place it's in, then I think he'll do really well with that. He also has a cork hide. It's actually pretty big. It goes all this length and then of course curves up and touches that wall. There's his water dish back there, his calcium dish right here. And then this is a really cool piece of cork that's open on this end and this end, but also has this hole right here in the middle, like a little window or a little door. So it's like another entry or exit hole for him. I think that he'll really enjoy engaging with it. I'm really excited about introducing him to this enclosure. I'm also pretty nervous, so I'm gonna go get him and hopefully all goes well. So, fingers crossed. Since Rago is not comfortable being grabbed up yet, I used his coconut house to get him and now we're gonna put him in his house. Come on. Oh, it's okay. Here. I'll leave this here and you can walk out yourself. Go ahead. It's gonna be stressful at first. And don't worry guys, I'm gonna sit right here while this door is open so that I can catch him if he tries to jump off the edge. It will take him like a day to realize that this is an edge. Here you go. Go out. This is your new house. There we go. Yeah, that's your house. Your new house, Bubba. It's actually a pretty similar design to my gecko Mira's enclosure. And Mira is my gecko most similar to Rago. She has stunted growth and both of her eyes are pretty deformed. She has skin that has grown over her eyes actually and it's because her eyelids couldn't close because they were um, improperly formed when she was a baby. But Rago takes it a step further and he has the, um, the cleft lips as well or the cleft nostrils. Oh, I also want to note that this humid hide is like incredibly tall. I'm actually going to switch his out for a shorter one, but the tall one's the only one I have available at the moment. So when a shorter one is in the enclosure, this will be like open right to the top of it and he can like crawl out onto his humid hide and into here and it'll be more cohesive and it'll just make more sense in the design, but figured I should make a note of that. I can hear him moving around in there, but I don't see him.
my hand, Bubba. Yeah, you're in my hand right now. You're okay. But don't freak out. Don't freak out. You're good. Good job. I know, I know. It can be a little scary. You're learning. Good job. Good job. Good job. Well done, Rico. Well done. Yes, good boy. See, this is really great for handling, too, because it allows him to walk. You gotta learn the edge. Good boy. Yes, that's your edge. Good boy. Okay, let me lower this a little bit so I don't have to keep straining. Uh oh, careful, that's your edge. That's your edge. <laughs> Let's help you back inside. And the good thing is, if he does fall from the edge, like if he jumps out of my hand, or anything like that, he will not hurt himself. The ground is only a foot away. So, it's all good. It's okay. I know, you don't like being squeezed. I know, I know. It's okay. Uh-oh, careful, careful. <laughs> careful, I know. You don't understand quite yet. It's okay, you're getting spooked. So I think what we're gonna do, since he's getting a little bit more spooked, is we're gonna close the door. Yes, go in yes, go inside your house. This is your safe zone. Yep. This is safe. Yeah, safe space. Mm-hmm. There you go. I knew you could fit under there. You're so tiny. Safe. Safety. Mm-hmm. Good, Rico. But even just seeing like how easily he'll just like walk into my hand, it gives me really great hope that he'll be much better with handling. That's why I totally prefer front opening enclosures to top opening enclosures when it comes to, well, really any animal, but in particular leopard geckos. Oh, he's pushing behind his human hide. He liked doing that in his other enclosure too. There he is, he's behind it. <laughs> There's his face, do you see his face popping out right there? That's him little face. <laughs> what are you doing, goofball? You're stuck against the wall. Look at this. Look at this goofy dude. What are you doing? Hmm? Oh my goodness gracious. Do you see that? Silly. Absolutely silly. So I think we're gonna leave Rago to um, get acclimated to his enclosure, which I think he'll do best in the dark. So I'm gonna close up his door, leave him be, and I will come back to you guys tomorrow with feeding him for the first time in his new enclosure and checking out, <laughs> like, what his behavior is like. I'm sure, like all the other geckos, he's going to like fling his calcium all about his enclosure, which is gonna be just, uh-oh, he got spooked. You can see him breathing really heavy. It's okay, Rago. So like I said, I'm gonna put the door on, let him get acclimated by, him, by himself, um, turn the lights off in the pet room, I saved this as like the thing I did last this evening so that I could turn the light off right away, let him get acclimated, and not be afraid. Hi little guy. How you doing? Hi. Sorry for the obnoxious fan on in the background. Um, but he did play in his calcium a bit, otherwise everything doesn't look disturbed, and I saw him in his human hide when I first came in the room, but he ran away. So, I don't know where he is actually, I can't really see him. I think he's in his hot hide. Let's see if this works. Oh, he's not. He's, he's up here. 
So there's Rego's little butt. Hi, honey. Do you want to eat? It might be hard to see you guys, but he's definitely going to eat. Or, I mean, I'm definitely going to offer him food once we'll see if he eats. Ready? Want to eat? Come on. Yeah. Come on. It's yours, Bubba. Good. Good job. Don't worry, I crushed the head of the worm, so you don't have to worry about him getting bit or anything like that. There it goes. Good job. You guys can't even see. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Well done. I don't want to turn the flash on either, so you just have to see blurry darkness. There he is. You guys can see a little bit better now. Hi, buddy. Well done. Yes. Was that yummy? You think you're going to get more food, do you? Hey bud, you want to eat? Good job. Yummy? Deliciousness? Good job. Good job, bud. He's fearless. Like he just walks right out onto my hand. Look at him. Way to go, bud. Are you ready for food, Bubba? Let me find a super warm your size. Hey, buddy. Hold on. Careful. There you are. Yum, yum, huh? That's good, huh? Good job, pal.
There were a couple things I was trying to say in this clip, but the audio was all over the place. It kept cutting in and out, so I was like, I'll just do a voiceover. What I wanted to say is that while handling Rago last night, because this clip was taken from last night, I shined a light in his eyes, which obviously is stressful, but I wanted to see like his actual eyeballs, because it is kind of hard to see them, especially the one that has the smaller eyelids or the, the smaller growth. Um, basically, there isn't really much going on in that small eye. In fact, I could only see a sliver of his eyeball, so he's pretty much completely blind in that eye. Now, as for the second eye, you can actually see an eyeball. It's a lot like my gecko Mira, where part of the eye is restricted because there's skin growth over it, um, and then the other part, you can actually see an eyeball. For having impaired vision in one eye and no vision in the other he does a lot better than you would expect and he's losing all of his baby white in fact he's like mostly yellow now which is kind of what happens to max snows so i think he's probably some sort of max snow though don't quote me on it because i don't know his morph other than that he's doing extremely well he likes his new gecko bookshelf he didn't show a huge um like display of stress when he was moved to it and he hasn't been stressed the entire time handling has been going really well as you saw on the clips i'm just it's great and i'm really really happy for rego and i hope you guys are happy too i'll see you guys in the next one bye